I saw that several of you had critical comments on my recent video about the black hole information loss problem. I seem to have caused myself an information loss problem problem. But since I still have the microphone here, I thought I might as well make use of that. So grab a coffee and let's pretend we're not procrastinating. Here is one of the comments. The only criticism I have is the it won't be useful for anything comment. The amount of seemingly useless facts that end up being the source for useful ideas is incredible. Fair enough. Before I reply to this, let me briefly summarize what I said in the video, because even I got a bit lost half through. I said that resolving the black hole information paradox doesn't tell us anything about nature. Sounds harsh, I know, but it's not a hypothetical statement. The paradox has been resolved multiple times already, and it hasn't told us anything about nature. The video was a brief update about a recent publication which said that black holes leak information as they radiate. So the problem has been solved again, this time by two guys who I've known for decades. Hey, Xavier, Steve, in case you're listening, great work. I've talked about this topic in longer videos several times before, and here's the issue, the lack of nuance. I didn't tell you the full story. The full story goes like this. The black hole information loss problem is a mathematical inconsistency. You take Einstein's theory of general relativity, that's not a quantum theory, and combine it with the quantum physics of particles. This gives you what's called semi-classical gravity. That's what Stephen Hawking did in his calculation. It does not contain quantum gravity because that would mean that gravity itself has quantum properties, not just the particles. I know that's linguistically confusing, but not everything with quantum and gravity is quantum gravity, just like not everything with you and tube is YouTube. Hawking's calculation doesn't use quantum gravity because we don't have that theory and even for a theoretical physicist it's difficult to calculate with equations that you don't have. So Hawking used this semi-classical approach. If you do that, you find that black holes give off radiation and lose mass until they're entirely gone. But that process is irreversible and therefore incompatible with quantum physics. And that's the inconsistency. You start with an assumption, that's quantum physics, add another, that's general relativity, and the result disagrees with the assumption you started from. Resolving inconsistencies in natural laws is the best way to make progress in theory development and this is why this problem has attracted so much attention. However, there are always many ways to resolve inconsistencies. To see this, you only need to know that if you have any set of assumptions that has an internal inconsistency, you can just throw out assumptions until the inconsistency vanishes. There are many ways to do that, and physicists have tried all of them. Think of it this way. You're getting married, and you have to assign people two seats, but Aunt Annie can't sit next to Uncle Bob, the Jacobson family shouldn't get too close to the drinks, you can't put a single woman on a table with only men, and so on. After thinking about this for six weeks, you formally prove that there exists no seating order that will fulfill all requirements. So you take people off the guest list until the problem's solved. There are many ways to do this, and maybe now you think that getting married wasn't such a great idea after all. And that's basically how physicists deal with inconsistencies. They take assumptions for their calculations off the guest list. The most obvious unwelcome guest for black hole radiation is the idea that semi-classical gravity is sufficient to calculate what happens. I think this has always been obvious. It's just that since we don't have a theory of quantum gravity to deal with the calculation, there wasn't anything to be said about it. This is where the problems of academia come in. If there's nothing to be said about a problem, you can't publish papers about it. So what happened is that physicists found reasons for why the semi-classical approximation should be good, for why quantum gravity should not be necessary. And then they wrote more and more papers about solutions to this supposed problem. I'm not saying that they did this deliberately deliberately. It's just what's aptly been dubbed the natural selection of bad science. Topics that produce papers have an advantage, so they attract research interest. 
It's the same thing that happened with string theory and inflation. These ideas lend themselves to writing papers and so they produce results and that generates funding which pays for people to write more papers and so on. Some of the solutions for the black hole information loss problem have been for example that black holes leave behind remnants or that black holes never really form or that they create wormholes or that the information comes out or that maybe quantum mechanics is just wrong. There's a very long list of these solutions. And it's not like they're mathematically incorrect. They're mostly mathematically correct. But which of them describes what physically actually happens? Well, for that, you need to go and make a measurement because this is science, not maths. Unfortunately, we can't make the measurement. It's because the radiation that comes out of the black holes that we know to exist is far too weak. Even if we could measure it, it'd take 10 to the 100 years or so until they've radiated away. Not 10 to 100 years, 10 to the power of 100 years. By that time, my Amazon order might actually have arrived. Clearly, this isn't an experiment which is going to happen anytime soon. The only way to do an experiment would be to find tiny black holes that decay quickly, which isn't as nutty as it sounds. I just talked about this in another episode. So... I've summarized a five minutes video in 10 minutes. Now all you need to do is double it 20 more times and we'll break YouTube. That said, let me then answer these comments. The only criticism I have is the it won't be useful for anything comment. The amount of seemingly useless facts that end up being the source for useful ideas is incredible. The reason I said this is that we have no way to make black holes, so there's no practical use in knowing how they decay. We couldn't do anything with that knowledge even if we had it. Maybe it would become useful in a million years or so, but is this something we need to work on right now? I agree that I shouldn't have said that it won't be useful for anything because you never know who or what might be inspired by such a finding. But that's a very low bar to jump for research, don't you think? I mean, even this video could potentially one day be the source for useful ideas, like maybe a pop killer that doesn't cover your entire face. Here is... Here is another comment. I'm kind of skeptical that resolving the black hole info paradox wouldn't tell us anything about nature. If we knew how matter behaved under extreme densities, we'd probably have more to say about what was going on before the Big Bang. Seems philosophically interesting to me at least. Okay, three things. First, I can see where this question is coming from, but the black hole information paradox is not about matter at extreme densities. Just mathematically, it doesn't play any role. Think about it for a moment. If it did, why aren't physicists constantly talking about what matter the collapsing star was made of and what its equation of state is? It's because that doesn't play any role for the question of whether the information comes out. These are two different questions entirely. Second, we do have solutions to the black hole information loss paradox, several of them, and they haven't told us anything about nature. And third, this is a point that Roger Penrose likes to stress, the singularity inside a black hole is very different from the singularity at the Big Bang. And let me address one final comment. One reason I think the black hole information problem is actually interesting and worth our attention is that it's a conflict of principles. The deepest rules of quantum field theory are violated by fundamental results from general relativity. The biggest strides in theoretical physics often occur when we resolve conflicts of principle of this type. They have typically led to paradigm shifts in our understanding of nature. So. While there is a lot of speculation and overblown hype about the problem within the confines of actual research, it's still quite important in my opinion. Yes, indeed, resolving conflicts of principles, which is what I call inconsistencies, is the most promising way to make progress in theory development. It's historically been incredibly successful. 
The problem is that there are always many different ways to do that. In the end, experiment must decide. And if there are no experiments, we can't make progress. This, by the way, is also the problem with quantum gravity. There are different ways to resolve this inconsistency. And in the end, experiment must decide. So for what I'm concerned, we should focus on figuring out how to make these experimental tests. And this is what I worked on after abandoning the black hole stuff. But that's another story and shall be told another time. So enough now, go and do something useful with your day.